A few years after planting small fruits, whether it's blackberries, blueberries, or raspberries, you may find that you've got an overgrown, bushy shrub rather than a productive plant. Or you may look at it and think, nothing's happening here. So what we want to do is talk to my friend Dave Lockwood, UT Fruit Specialist with Extension, and figure out what do we need to do with a plant like this that looks like it needs to be pulled up. Dave, yes. help! Okay. <laughs> talk, talk to us about this blueberry plant, because this is pretty typical of what you'll see right now before right. the the plant starts bushing out. Yeah. Blueberries can be a slow starter in our planting. So uh, one of the things I like to do is, is build the canopy up in the air uh, and not worry about early fruit production. And to do that, uh, similar to what we talked about in trees, we're gonna look at the tree or at the plant and determine whether we've got any dead or broken uh, wood or shoots in the tree. We're gonna prune those off like we did here. And one thing I always caution people about is look at the basal part of the cut and see what the color of the wood is when you make that cut to make sure it's, it's healthy and green. Okay, so those were dead shoots. This is also a dead shoot. So the first things I would do would be to cut those off. Now blueberry can set fruit buds on a very young plant. And the first few years of their life, especially if they're kind of weak and growing, they don't want to have fruit. We, we're going to defruit them. This plant does not have any fruit buds on it. I do think the deer have grazed off a lot of them. Well, actually I said it didn't, but it does have a couple. Uh, you can always tell the fruit buds on blueberry in that there are larger, plumper, rounder buds as opposed to the leaf buds, which are much smaller, more pointed, and occur further down the shoot. So there's a couple fruit buds there. So, there are a couple so this here. is leaf. Yes. And this is fruit. That's correct. And so in a young plant like this, where your primary goal is to grow up the plant, you don't want to let it fruit. So uh, I like to come in while the plant is still dormant and cut off the shoots with fruit buds on because we're tempted to leave some fruit to see what it's going to be like. So that that we just showed with the fruit growing on, you're, you're going to cut that off right. and never let it never let it go to fruit. Right, and depending on how the plant grows, we may do that for the first two or three years of its life. Okay. Then after the canopy gets on up, then we'll let it start to fruit, and you'll have a bigger plant, and you'll have better crop, and it's going to be up higher where you've got better air circulation around the canopy for disease control and also for ease of maintenance. You know, Dave, I get that, though, because if I had seen that, I would have been like, oh, maybe we'll have just a couple of blueberries, yeah. and, and but you, that's not what you want to happen no. with this plant. Okay, so let's look at this one because this one, to me, looks... Uh, uh, similar to that. So I'm assuming this comes off. Right. Yeah. This comes off. Mm -hmm. Okay. And All right. And then what about, I mean, this looks kind of odd. We've got, uh, the shoot has died back to this point. And I like to always cut back into healthy wood. So I'm going to cut that dead tip off. Again, we'll look at the color of the uh, wood under the cut. It's healthy. That's good. If it wasn't healthy, I'd cut further down. All right. And let's go to this one other one that looks like it's kind of in that same in that same boat. Do they typically all kind of match each other when at this point of the year when you've got nothing really going on? It's quite common for them to have very uh, very similar growth habits. So on this one, uh, the shoot you're touching and this one are dead, the tip of this one is dead. I probably would go below those and cut it all off. And again, we've got a healthy shoot. Uh, I'm gonna cut this dead tip off here and leave this, it's fairly healthy. Now, we do have fruit buds here. No, oh, are you going to cut those off? Oh, I am. I'm oh, mean. Of course uh, you So are. I'm going to come below those and cut them all off. Uh, oh. And actually, I, I do the same thing there. So we've we've gotten rid of the weaker shoot growth, where it's a side branched, and we're trying to build stronger growth and more upright growth. Okay, so Dave. What do you do with this? Do you mulch this? What, how do you take care of it from here on out right. after you've done all these yeah. cuts? Well, blueberries are kind of a unique plant in that they're, one, they're acid-loving plants. They're a lot like azaleas. 
in the mm -hmm. landscape. So they need an acid soil. So we build a raised bed, and you can see the bed here. Uh, and we may have a contained bed like this, or it may not be contained. But we, we incorporate a lot of organic matter. We lower the pH, uh, and that does several things. First off, blueberries have a very shallow root system, so they're very vulnerable to hot temperatures in the summer, or if it turns out dry, those roots are going to be apt to dry out. The mulch will uh, temper both temperature and moisture levels in the root zone of the plant. And, and makes it a whole lot more uh, conducive to good root growth, which of course is essential for top growth. Right. Following that, we like to irrigate, and you can see that there's a, an irrigation line laid down on top of the ground here, because in the spring, we quite often get adequate water, but as we often see midsummer, which is still a critical time uh, in the blueberry uh, plant's growth, we'll, we'll run into dry times. Right. And so without a combination of the mulch and supplemental watering, the plants are going to suffer. So, so this summer, you, you just keep it mulched and watered and you don't do anything else to the plant? I would probably fertilize it about three times. Very light application. So if you've got just a few blueberry plants and you've got some azalea plants, I use azalea food, azalea fertilizer on my blueberries as well because they had similar fertility requirements. If I had a lot of blueberries and no azaleas, I would buy a fertilizer called ammonium sulfate, which is an acid forming nitrogen fertilizer and use that. But it would only be like an ounce or so at bloom Mm -hmm. about six weeks again and then six weeks after that. So about three applications, assuming that either we're irrigating or that we're getting good rainfall. And by midsummer, I would no longer fertilize the plant. And let it just do its thing? Yes. And, and just keep it watered? Yes. Okay, all right, so after about three years then is when we start getting some some yummies? Yes, yeah. Generally, on, and depends a little bit on how the plant's grown, but if it's grown like we'd expect it will, the third year I'd be inclined to let it start to fruit. Got it. Okay, Dave, thank you so much for this. I've learned a lot. Um, you're a good pruner, Dave. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm sure the plants will agree, but at, it looks a little scary at first. But thanks for the lesson on that. I think we all needed it. Well, you're very welcome. For inspiring garden tours, growing tips, and garden projects, visit our website at volunteergardener.org or on YouTube at the Volunteer Gardener channel and like us on Facebook.